Hello, this is Tor Mode again, and I want to do another video. I like to do videos these days. I have things on my heart that I want to talk about, that I want to communicate, that I want to resonate from within me, from my inner sanctuary, my inner garden, you might say, my heart, my liver, my blood, the system within me, the life within me, the garden of me. And right there is part of the big solution that we as humanity need to find and discover, basically, and realize. Um, which is, you know, because if we look at the potential of life, the potential of the human being, the potential of, of a good life for all, of a, of a utopia, of something better, the potential of something better, looking at the human being, we can, we can realize that the mind represents 1% of that potential. Okay? While the physical body, the equal in one physical body that we all have equally, represents 99%. What does that mean? It means like the typical 1% elite people who have power or extreme amounts of money. That is the 1% we see that is, you know, has been doing all the money dealing and control systems on earth, basically. That is the 1% in that perspective. While the masses, the workers and everybody else, the, the families and the people, the students, the children, the workforce, everybody else is the 99% suffering with less, suffering in inferiority, feeling abused and feeling the need to revolt basically. But if we really look at this, because revolting and going into anger and trying to, going into emotional reactions over the 1% elite is counterproductive actually. Going into emotional reactions and try, trying to attack and judge and blame and hate other people like the 1% like the for instance, is still a mind system you know that emotional reacting blame judgment hate revolt all that are emotional systems and they are based on mind systems you know and that is still the same old story of one percent again the mind box the, uh, the, the invisible imaginary box the mind, the unconscious, conscious and subconscious mind with ego, with consciousness, with personalities, with feelings, emotions, thinking, all that commotion, all that stress, you know. That represents 1%. While the physical body... The, my, my, my heart, my liver, my blood, my inside, my flesh. And back in the days they said the flesh of man is the living God. Like Jesus says, the flesh of man is the living God. Today we might say the physical body of man is the divine, is the living God basically. The physical self-awareness is the divine is the, is is the godhood basically you know where i have this garden this sanctuary this place this power animal this flame within me that i know is me where i can feel my heart where i can communicate with my body systems through knowing what i want to eat and what i don't want to eat for instance, or when I need rest, when I need, when I need stretching, 
when I need a cold shower, all these things to support the body. The physical body and self-awareness of one's physical body is the great key here and an opportunity and potential for humanity. The, the lightning, the lightning, white, bright, white, yet imaginary mind represents the other part, the, you know, the lostness, the chaos, the thinking, the feelings and emotions, consciousness, ego, all that stuff that have been keeping us inferior. So it's all been in reverse, you know. And this is some of the points that Jesus was talking about when he walked on earth. To find that self-awareness, physical physical self-awareness. One of the things that is most, that is, might sound most astonishing is the fact when Jesus talks about the physical flesh of man is the Godhood, it's a God potential, the God itself, the living breath, breath awareness. The, the breath is like the spirit of God, basically. So, um, because lesser than 1% of what Jesus was talking about is actually written in the Bible. I have it right here. I have it right here. And I, and I do tend to read in it once in a while, but I have made up, I have brought myself to a very fine understanding of this through Equaf and this a series on Equaf called Crucifixion of Jesus where we get a very a rare and a totally unique glimpse into the living of Jesus and what he what he really was talking about why he was really here because this book was written by people who was concerned about their power, concerned about their money, concerned about systems, and they didn't want all the, what Jesus was actually saying when he was walking on earth. They didn't want all that to be known because that would be turning the world upside down. From reverse into forward, basically. Because also back then, like Jesus said, there are many things that are haywire and insane and abuse and and that needs to change. And what Jesus says is we need to totally reverse the whole thing. But there were many people with power and money who did not want that. And they, therefore they wrote only a tiny, 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 tiny fragment of what he actually said in this book. So that's one reason why we haven't been able to figure that out, basically. So, but I am very content. I'm very grounded and very content with, with knowing that I have figured such out. So, um, but today we see where very many of us it's very easy to slip into the mind, to slip into the mind and just drift along with, with, with imagination, with feelings and emotions, particular feelings perhaps, like feel good, love, you know. Just have some love through Facebook and, and then YouTube, Spotify, whatever, some love and just float on love. It's just a mind system. It's not real. Because the wor this world is still not real. This, still, this world is still based on going in reverse. You know, when reality shifts, and reality is shifting, when reality shifts, you know, and reality is currently shifting, it's going slowly, 
we're taking it slowly, but it is shifting. Okay. Um, we will find that you know we are equal and one. We are equal and one. What does that mean? We all have a body, we all have a heart, we all have a, a liver and, and all these systems of our body that is equal and we are all equals. And, you know, that is one of the reasons why we need to establish an equal money system. Because with a equal, and I do mean 100% equal money system, where everybody is given the same, the exact same amount of money income every so and so often, That would imagine that if all if everybody were given plentiful of money, everybody was given plentiful of money, and they were all given the exact same amount of money, because our needs does not vary very much. The needs of human beings does not vary a whole lot, so it's in theory. It's pretty simple to say that we are all equal and we can be given the same amount of income. And that is what we need to start doing eventually. Obviously, this will also take some time, but that is where we want to be. And imagine that if everybody was given the exact same amount of money, like a lot of money to all of us, every so and so often. It would be a, br a pretty amazing new reality, to put it simply. There wouldn't be crimes, there wouldn't be wars, you know. A ton of fear and anxiety would just be weeded out of our existence, of our matrix. So, that's where we're headed, to an equal money system. And... A way to get there is to, you know, let go of the imaginary balloon, bubble, box of the mind, because it's not real. And by if you cling on to your mind or your consciousness or personalities or feelings or emotions or thoughts or all these th things in the mind, what are you doing? You're doing the same old story that they've never, d d d you know, d d do the same old thing. The same old believing in your mind, believing in your thoughts, believing your feeling of surfing on love or whatever. Come on. 20 to 30,000 children die each day because they have no money for food. 20 to 30,000 children approximately each day. That's 6 million a year. Each year a holocaust of children dying because they have no money for food, okay? So, and all the love in the world, and the endless love and the unlimited love, come on, get real, okay? Get real. I have a heart, and I can say that, uh, that I, can, I can, you know, have ideas about what love would, would be like. And I can even say that I can love something or someone or some picture or something, some idea. Okay? But at the same time, I know very well that that is a positivity within me. At the same time, ladies and gentlemen, I know very well that that is a, a polarity within me or a, at least a positivity within me, a positive experience. And a positive experience is polarity of feelings and emotions, good, bad, capitalism, socialism, right, wrong, north, south, red, blue. All the polarities, all the stinking polarities, which keeps us in an inferior position, up and down, right, wrong, red, blue, black, white, keep us in an inferior position and never ever getting to 
live the real, live the real, found the real true self, okay? The heart, the, the liver, to be with that, to have awareness that I am a liver, I am a heart, I am blood fl flowing through my body, equally to all human beings, you know? I have a liver, I have a heart, I have blood flowing through me, equally to each and every other human being on this earth. Instead of going into the ego or the magnation and thinking and believing and thinking and believing in whatever, you know. So, and this is not easy to, 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 to really get to terms with because often what we find in here, often what we find in here in this universe within our, within our bodies is darkness basically because of suppressed and denied traumas memories things we want to hide from things that we fear within us so there's something we can work on because when we realize ourselves when we burst through these fears okay when we can forgive those fears and forgive that uh, inferiority that's when we realize and we uncover new land within ourselves in self which is universal self is universal you know you are self and I am self and everybody is self and self has a heart self has a liver self has all this blood all the cells you know and so on uh, and, and the body is the real godhood that we need to find, the body. Listen to the body. The body knows. So, this is a, you know, again, coming, saying that um, the mind represents the 1% of the human potential. The mind box represents the 1% of the human potential. Currently in the world of money system and all that, the mind is ruling. Currently in the world with the money system and the wars and all the abuse and all the consume and all the poison and all the hate and fear the mind percent the one percent of mind is ha, has been for eons eons of time been in control but it's not real it is an imaginary bling 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 picture you know but it's not real what is real however is who i am within myself and that is the 99% potential of life as each in each and every one of us. So we each and every one of us have an equal say in discovering our own sanctuary, our inner reality, the heart, the liver, the blood, the cells, my intestine, my stomach, my, my, my lungs, my tips of my finger, tips of my toes, my bum, everything is part of self equal and one and the body the body is the 99 percent potential of what we can create and establish and discover and realize in our lifetime each and every one of us can, can do that and i think that many of us more and more of us know that when we get one, uh, it's often when we're together with other people, or we might be alone, even when we have a discovery, we discover something from listening to someone, or talking to ourselves, or writing, or reading, or we're doing some activity, and we have this good, grounded, stable self awareness. You know, we're breathing steadily, reading a book, you're doing some knitting, you're doing the dishes, you're doing some, 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 some good meditative movement yoga, whatever, or whatever you do. And in those moments, 
or you're working out in a gym. In those moments, you are connecting to your physicality. It's very, very simple. You're connecting to your physicality. Often we think about this as love. Like the heart is just love, or the liver is just love, or the blood is just love. But I dare you to look a bit further, to ground yourself more, and discover more of that self. I'm not judging that, that you, I'm not saying that, this, you know, just find that inner animal, the inner sanctuary, the flame, the phoenix bird, the eagle, the dragon, the child, the persona in here that you find, that you recognize in self. And look around, what is, what is there? How does the heart look, how does the heart look in that picture, in, this, in that inner sanctuary? Often, often picture as a, as a ship, a ship with a captain staring, you know, like the ark, like the ark, you know. Uh, so there are many, uh, many things to realize. And self is the key here, to discover that self, to, to unveil, unveil those layers that keeps... The mind keeps, the 1% keeps the physical slave, you know? The 1% keeps the physical slave. Like we see, we're working, working, how, how the, how the uh, works as uh, capitalism operates. 1% are, or the very, very rich anyhow, they can just do nothing and have all their billions and just relax and just be cool about it or whatever they might feel like doing, going, doing golf or whatever while the rest of us has to work our asses off, okay? And they're, all, they're running off with all the money and we're working our asses off, you know? But revolting and, go, and hating and fearing them, the 1% or the rich or the secret elite or the whatever elite, imaginary conspiracy, whatever it is, does not help. What helps is self-realization, self-discovery, self-empowerment, physical self-awareness. So give yourself a hug and learn what is in here. Learn to find grounding what is in here. All this jazz, you know. Learn to find grounding and make some drawings, make some writings, do some forgiveness to establish a self anchor with you that you are in your sanctuary. Okay? In the 99%. That is 99% of the life potential we're facing just now on, 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 among humanity. So be that brick that element of change, of taking charge of your life, from letting your body decide more, letting the physical be in charge. Um, so, the mind is a beautiful slave, but a dangerous master. So that is what we have to reverse. The mind is a beautiful slave, but a dangerous master. The mind has been our master for endless and endless lots of time in the past. The mind has been in charge, no doubt, no doubt. And it's been limiting us, humanity, a lot. It has been limiting, it, it, it has been hurting us, okay? It has been hurting us beyond. The fact that we as humanity have, let, have been led by our mind system, our thinking system, our ego, our consciousness, have been hurting life to an immense degree. Okay? So there's a lot of shame involved in this. There's a lot of shame and fear and hurt involved in this. What we have to realize is that the physical is the 99% of life potential. Okay, 
and we can we can create so endless and I mean endless qualities among us humans on earth if we let we find that ease we find that groundedness that self-awareness with the physical with the field with the flow with the flame within the power animal whatever you call yourself the, the, the element between the mind, the physical, that is the being. My, mind, body and being. Because the mind has been ruling this life and hurting this life to a, to a very far, to a, you know, beyond. We know that. Whole life has been sick and criminal and insane. But it's the, it doesn't help to revolt and be anger because that is still a mind system if we revolt and go for revenge and anger and blame and fear and judgment that is still a mind system ladies and gentlemen we need to step out of that box we need to step out of that box and find our sanctuary and ourselves as, a, as the godhood of self from the physical into the being and live that good world that we want to create for ourselves and for everybody else equally and one.